Hey everybody, thanks again for joining me on another student segment from the Intentional Classroom. Today we're going to talk about fundamentals of color formulation. My, my chemistry of hair color video went so well that I thought, let's do one on formulation and kind of breaking things down. So some of this might seem a little repetitive because we go back to the level system, we go back to hair color. However, you have to truly understand those things to get into formulation. So the video is a little bit on the long side, take it in, watch it a few times, watch it in segments if you need to, um, but it's important information, okay? So again, this is fundamentals. We, for the sake of this video, are gonna just kind of pretend everybody has virgin hair color, okay? Now, I wanna, I wanna put that out there because it's important that you start asking questions. What happens if it's not virgin hair color? What happens if there's bleach all over the head? All of those types of things. Start asking yourself those questions. Start asking your instructor those questions. But this video is really intended to give you a basic foundation of color formulation. What does it look like? How do I figure out when I choose what level, what tones I should add to the hair, all that good jazz, okay? This information applies to any color line you could be using. It's important that you remember that. The foundations, the fundamentals, the color wheel, it's the same if you're using Redken, Matrix, Wella, Goldwell, it doesn't matter, all right? It's about understanding your foundation. If you understand that, you then just have to learn the line. What does it stand for? What does each number look like in that line, okay? So just remember that stuff. This should apply to absolutely any color line you decide you're going to use as a student or a professional. Okay, that information, let's get started. I wanna just throw it out there. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to follow me, guys. Um, it is how I get the word out. It's how I can help more people. So please, 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 The Intentional Classroom, Teresa Speaks, sh you know, follow it all, share it all, subscribe to it all. Make sure you hit those buttons, okay? Because it is how I can, I can talk to the world, okay? As more people, you know, following. So please, please, please. All right, so our learning objectives today is to explore the categories of color and the purpose of each. We're gonna review the color wheel and level system. I'm not gonna go crazy deep. We're just gonna kind of talk about the different elements of it, make sure you remember that stuff. We're going to go into the basic rules. I have a couple rules of color formulation that you really need to understand. We're gonna talk about something called color math. Now, I know you did not go to beauty school because you wanna do math. I totally understand that. But it's a unique way to kind of look at it because they really are formulas, just like mathematical formulas. If I want to achieve this, what do I need, okay? And then we're gonna very slightly touch on corrective color. When do we have to transition into it? Which techniques do I use? That kind of stuff. Okay, so that's the plan. Um, this video, probably about 45 minutes when it's all said and done. A little different this time without students asking questions. But if you have questions, comment, reach out to me. I am always attached and I will always respond. Okay, so please, please, please always remember you can reach out and ask for more help if you need it. All right, 64,270,000 people got their hair colored in 2019. That is a crazy amount. So when you ask questions like, well, why do I need to know this? Or if you're a barber and you're thinking, I'm not ever gonna do hair color, don't, don't make that assumption. There are plenty of things that in hair school we decide we're not going to do when we get out. But if you want to make money, you're going to do it, right? I never thought I would do a perm after graduation. You bet your butt if somebody asked me for a perm, I want that 150 bucks I'm taking them, okay? So don't be one of those people that thinks this is all I'm going to do. If you, if color is not your jam, that does not mean you run away from it. It means you go towards it, you learn it, you embrace it, and you offer that so that you can have more money in your pocket because look how many people are doing it. Look how many people are getting their hair colored, okay? So let's talk about fundamental number one the types of hair color. You have oxidative and you have non-oxidative hair color, all right? Oxidative requires a developer. It oxidizes in the hair, which means you see it changing color when oxygen starts to hit it, okay? It uses ammonia and H2O2, which is just hydrogen peroxide, and it can be permanent or demi-permanent hair color, okay? But the key there, oxidative, is that it uses ammonia, it has something or something like it. It uses hydrogen peroxide. You have to mix it to make it work. It doesn't just work, okay? So that's oxidative color. Non-oxidative color is there is no oxidation. There, it doesn't change color in the bowl. What you see is what you get. There is no mixing. 
This is your temporary colors or your semi-permanent colors. Again, I know that this is a little repetitive, guys, but you need to know this because if you don't really understand the difference between the two, you might start frying hair or you may be, you know, wasting some time because you're going to put a color on that you think is going to do something and then it doesn't. So you need to know this, all right? So in non-oxidative color, we have temporary, right? This is your mascara. When you, girls, when you put mascara on your eyelashes, that's temporary color. It's coating the hair shaft, okay? Um, colored hairspray, it's Halloween time right now, right? I mean, it's for a week from Halloween right now. Um, the hairsprays, that's temporary hair color. It's meant to be put in for a day. When you wash it, it comes back out, okay? A rinse, now back in my hair school days, maybe 20 years ago now, um, that was something we did where the ladies would come in for a roller set, we would put a temporary rinse on, we'd set their hair and it was like this really liquidy tint. And then they'd come back the next week and they'd have it washed out and they'd have it all done again. Yes, it was only once a week they'd wash their hair. It was real life, okay? And then it coats the cuticle like I've mentioned, okay? It lasts one shampoo. It is not meant to last longer. Now, if you have super porous hair or you over bleach it, it might last more than one shampoo. I've done that. You know, I put some bleach in my hair and if I spray it green, it might last a shampoo or two whether I like it or not. So be cautious. If the hair is super porous, the cuticle is really damaged, it might actually last more than one shampoo. Semi-permanent color. Um, these are your fantasy colors. If you're picking up Pravana or Pulp Riot, you are using a semi-permanent color, Manic Panic, City Beats, all of that. It looks like it does in the bowl, right? When you squeeze Pulp Riot into a bowl, that's the color that you're going to get as long as the hair has been pre-lightened. So typically with semi-permanent, if you're going for a bright color, you almost always have to pre-lighten it first, okay? They are only meant to last about six to eight shampoos. Now, as we know, some of these last longer. They've been playing around with dye molecules to make sure that they have something, especially for those bright colors that can last a little bit longer than that, but they are not intended to last forever. They're supposed to be something that six to eight shampoos and then it washes out gradually. We know in things like Pravana, it doesn't necessarily wash out gradually, but this is what your textbook will say. This is what your state boards will say, okay? That's important to remember. We're here to talk about fundamentals, not professional stuff quite yet, okay? Types of oxidative color, you've got your demi-permanent color. This slightly lifts the cuticle so it can deposit, okay? There's not ammonia in it or anything like that, but it can slightly kind of slide into that cuticle so that it stains the inside layer, okay? This is your Shades EQ, your Color Sync. Um, every brand pretty much out there now has a demi permanent color. Uh, it is a larger molecule. It kind of gets trapped. It sits between the cuticle and the cortex layer. And it lasts about six to eight weeks and gently fades out, okay? So it's tone on tone. You are not going to lighten hair with a demi permanent color. So if a client is in your chair and they wanna go lighter, a demi permanent's not your choice. It's not going to do it, okay? However, it's important to know that it can actually last longer than a permanent color. You will have teachers tell you I'm dead wrong about this. I'm telling you that right now, okay? I've had plenty of people tell me I'm wrong, I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Here's the reality. You're not damaging the hair with a demi-permanent color. So while permanent color, which we'll talk about in a second, permanently alters the inside of the hair, it doesn't last forever. We know that. Permanent color doesn't last forever. And part of that is because we've damaged it. We've thrown a bunch of ammonia, a bunch of hydrogen peroxide. So once we start breaking out down that cuticle layer, the hair can't hold on to the color anymore. Demi-permanent color doesn't do that. So if you're going darker, and you're not trying to cover gray, demi permanent is actually going to last much longer than permanent color would. So just remember that. I've had plenty of people, once I tell them my reasoning behind it, they're like, that makes sense. But kind of that old school way of thinking is, is permanent is permanent. It lasts the longest. That's not actually true. So let's talk about permanent color, okay? It lifts up to four levels and deposits in one step up to four levels. You will hear me say up to many times when we talk about formulation. And that's because there's some factors we have to think about. What is the structure of the hair? What is the integrity of the hair? Is it super coarse? Is it super fine? Well, how is the cuticle layer doing? You know, is it over-processed? All of those things make a difference in how the hair is going to behave, all right? It requires something called an aniline derivative to actually hold the color in, okay? If you haven't if you haven't, go watch the chemistry of hair color. We'll go into aniline derivatives a little bit more in that video, all right? It's not truly permanent though, right? It just permanently alters the structure of your hair because when you use permanent color, you start breaking up the pigment molecules, you put more chemicals in that attach to each other. It's just this whole process. It's just different, but it doesn't necessarily last forever. Permanent, you've just permanently changed the inside, okay? So types of, that's your types of hair color. You need to retouch 
every three to four weeks with permanent color, right? Um, if you're refreshing the ends, I would almost always go back into demi-permanent color because again, we've already done the lightning. Why do we need to do that any further, okay? So permanent color, typically you need to retouch every three to four weeks. All right, when we use permanent color, we are going to have to use something called developer and that's to make that magic happen. That's the catalyst for change. Remember, we're talking about virgin hair, okay? There's a whole nother world of removing artificial color out and that kind of stuff. We'll talk on Lightner a tiny bit and maybe I'll do a, no, a whole video on it, but you'd be here forever if we go into that. This is, this is usually a four hour lesson that I'm doing right now crammed into 45, okay? So your permanent color uses developer and it's usually a 10, 20, 30 or 40. It's important to note that demi-permanent color also uses a developer. I'll talk about that here in one second, okay? 10 volume will lift up to one level. So if you were lifting one level of virgin hair, you would use a 10 volume. 20 volume will lift up to two levels. Remember that up to depends on the porosity, the cuticle layer, the texture, all that stuff, all right? 30 volume will lift up to three levels. And 40 volume, you guessed it, is going to lift up to four levels. Now, I told you I'd mention demi-permanent here in a second. So demi-permanent, guys, is typically about a five volume. It's about 2%. So what determines the strength of these actual developers is how much hydrogen peroxide is in the, the actual developer, okay? In a 10 volume, it's about 3%. In a 20, it's 6%. In 30, it's 9%. And in 40, it's 12%. So when you pick up a bottle of 40 volume, it's 12% hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide is what's responsible for lightening hair. So again, if, that, if, if this is all kind of like, what are you talking about, Teresa? It's all my chemistry of hair color video. I'm just touching it on it today just as a reminder because I feel like you could hear it over and over again. So that, that developer for a demi-permanent is actually just below a 10 volume. It's 2% instead of 3%, okay? Just a small amount of hydrogen peroxide. Okay. Let's just touch on lightning um, and lighteners. When you're lifting more than four levels, even if it's on virgin hair, you're going to have to use a lightener, okay? So if it's been previously colored or it's dark or it's, if you're going more than four levels, you're gonna have to use a lightener, okay? So just remember that. Lightener decolorizes the hair. It actually moves to the 10 levels of decolorization. It breaks the melanin into pieces so that light can pass through it. And there, there's my last point, <laughs> light passes through. The more light that can pass through, the lighter it appears for our eyes. So we're not gonna talk a ton about lightener today. It's just important to note that when you're doing a formulation, if you're looking at it and they're a level two and they wanna be silver, you're not gonna be able to formulate with hair color. You're going to have to move into the world of lighteners and toners and all that. Again, that's kind of more corrective. So we're gonna get into that a whole nother video, but at least, you know, you understand, like if you're looking at that dark hair and she wants to go blonde, don't pick out a color tube. You're gonna to have to move into lighteners, okay? So some of the chemicals in oxidation are ammonia. Remember, ammonia is lifting up the cuticle for us, all right? Ammonia is found in the actual tube of hair color. The higher the tube of color, so if you're using a level 10, it's going to have more ammonia in it than a level two would, okay? Um, that's exactly what I said. You can tell I know the, the information, right? <laughs> Hydrogen peroxide, that's responsible for breaking melanin into pieces for us. It's found in the developer. Um, and the stronger the volume, the more hydrogen peroxide that's present, right? Then you have your aniline derivative. This is a colorless dye molecule that combines with hydrogen peroxide once in the hair. Um, and it's what makes permanent truly permanent, all right? Ceramides is something that you'll see in a lot of your colors. So when you're choosing which color line you're going to use, ceramides are your friend. Basically it fills in the holes. When we lighten hair, we, it's, we turn the hair into Swiss cheese. We punch a bunch of holes into it. Ceramides help fill in those holes for us. Um, and they allow for a more consistent, even color for us so that it's nice and uniform down the hair strand, all right? And then you have OD, ODS2, which is an actual oil delivery system. This is all these new oil colors, like I guess they're not new anymore, but like chromatics, that kind of stuff. They have an oil delivery system that deposits conditioners as it colors the hair, okay? So 
one more time, all of that stuff, it really goes deeper in my um, chemistry of hair color video. So go watch that if you want more on the chemistry. I didn't want to spend a ton of time on that today, but I thought it was important so that you, as you're choosing your formula, you're choosing your color line, you know what you're working with. I'm a firm believer that you have to understand the chemicals in order to manipulate the hair without breaking it off. We don't want to break the hair, okay? All right, so fundamental number two is a level system in the color wheel. I get it. You've probably learned this before. I mean, I learned the color wheel, I think when I was in kindergarten, but it's important that you review it, you review it, go back to it. Guys, I have the color wheel tattooed, I can show you, on my arm because I think it's so important that we constantly refer back to our fundamentals, all right? Let's start with levels. Oh, oh I'm, I'm hitting all sorts of buttons here. Okay, let's talk about levels, right? Levels is how light, or dark the hair actually is, all right? It's determined by how much melanin is present in the hair. So if you look at a level one over here, okay? A level one, that's, I am not a graphic designer, so please be patient with my images that I've created, but I think it can give you a really simple, simple representation of what's going on inside the hair as we choose the colors, okay? So level one over here has, it's chock full. You can see light can't pass through it. It's so full of pigment that light cannot pass through it. It just absorbs the light in just like black, right? If you took a piece of construction paper or you took a piece of paper and you put it in front of a window and it's a black piece of paper full of pigment, the light can't pass through it. If you take a white piece of paper, you might see light actually pass through that, okay? And that's your level 10. If you look over here to the level 10, there's the same size pigment molecules, but they're kind of scattered about and light can pass right through the hair strand. When we lighten hair color, what we're doing is we're taking that dark pigment, all those molecules, and we're breaking them into pieces so that light can kind of wiggle its way through and it appears lighter for us. Physics says nothing can be created nor destroyed. So we're not, we're not eliminating the pigment. You can't make it go away, it's there. It's about changing the state so that light can pass through. Okay, so that's what we see over here. State board is going to say there's 10 levels because that is the generic, that is the, that's the answer. There's 10 levels. Level one being the darkest, level 10 being the lightest. Many American lines have 12. So just kind of know that if you're using Redken, there's I think 11. If you're using Matrix, there's 12. Um, but most, most lines have 10 levels. The only difference between the two is there's, if there's 12 levels, there's just a little bit less of a variation between each level, okay? So instead of just saying, you know, brown, you might see medium brown, medium light brown. They might throw some extra adjectives in there, but 10 levels is what to go with for most state boards out there, okay? Let's talk color wheel really quickly. You know your primary colors, right? Primary colors cannot be created. They are found in nature. You can't mix two things together to make red. Red exists as it exists. They are considered pure. You've got your red, your yellow, and your blue, um, and they are used to create all of the colors in the world. If you really wanna challenge yourself, take those three color crayons and make a color wheel that way. When I'm in a classroom, that's what I have my students do. They have to create a color wheel using just the three primaries and they have to get the balance right to create all of the other colors. You really wanna challenge yourself, try using Logic's hair color. They come in pure tones like that so that you can actually create all of the colors that you want. That, you know, if you go to, I don't know how many color lines, or colors there are now, but in Redken and Fusion, there used to be 78, right? Well, you can create all 78 with the three tones if you really know what you're doing, okay? So really challenge yourself as an artist, try some of that. But for now, as a student, go ahead and just start working with those three color crayons and trying to figure out how much takes it takes to really create all the other colors. So what are the other colors, right? Now we have our secondary colors. These are created by mixing two primary colors together, right? So if you have your red and yellow, you're making your orange. If you take red and blue, you make a violet. And if you take blue and yellow, you make a green, right? The primary or the secondary will live between the two primary it creates. So if you look at that color wheel, like I just said, you have your red, your yellow, and in between them lives your orange, all right? So that's your color wheel. All right. Now I'm going to just kind of touch on color math. We're going to go into tertiary colors, I promise, but I want you to see when it's still very basic what color math looks like. It's an equation. It's all an equation, right? If I have red and I want to get to violet, what am I missing? Red plus what equals violet? Well, we know it's blue, right? Red plus blue equals violet. It's a math equation. It's a very simple math equation, right? Yellow plus what equals green. Find X, right? I know you're super excited about algebra, but yellow plus blue equals green. Red plus what equals orange. Let me pause for one second. Think about it. Think about it. Okay. Red plus yellow 
equals orange, all right? That's your color math, it's that simple. We're gonna get a little more complicated in a second, but that's color math. Let's move into tertiary, right? Tertiary colors are made by mixing a primary and a secondary color together. The primary is always, always listed first, okay? So let me go back there just so you can kind of see what those are, just in case I didn't pause enough, right? You have your orange, you have your red, and then together they make red-orange. You see the primary was listed first. If you're red, you have your violet. Between the two, you have red-violet. Now, these are colors that you're going to start seeing on color tubes. You're going to see an RV on a color tube, right? When you look at a color tube, the number listed is the level. The letters are the tones, okay? Now, the first level or the first tone is always the more dominant color. So if you have an RV, it's red with some violet in it. If you have a YG, it's yellow with some green in it. Okay, so just kind of remember that. Let's go back to our color math because I know you love math so much, right? Red plus violet equals what? We just said it, right? Red violet. Green plus yellow equals what? Yellow green, right? We flipped it. So make sure that primary comes first. Red plus orange equals red orange yes we could go through every tertiary but i think you got it i think you understand now the when this math gets tricky is when we get into complementary colors okay so fundamental number three is understanding complementary colors so that you know how to achieve a desired tone all right all right, so I'm all about stupid little funny ways to kind of get the information. And so I always kind of explain complementary colors like this. If you have tension between somebody and you're arguing with somebody and you compliment them, what's going to happen? Everything's gonna kind of simmer down, right? It's going to neutralize the situation. If two people are fighting and someone's saying, hey, you're ugly, your face is ugly, blah, blah, blah. And instead of coming back at them, you say, man, your hair is so beautiful. Are they gonna stay angry? I mean, I guess they might think you're being sarcastic, but typically what will happen is we're like, oh, you're not, you're not actually ugly and everything's been neutralized. I know that's like a weird way to think about it, but it's the same in color is that when we are doing complementary colors, we're trying to neutralize the situation. We're calming it down. Down. We're making it so that it's not too hot, not too cool, where we really want to get it in the middle, right? Complementary colors are all about creating neutral, neutralizing the situation, canceling out tones, and creating that neutral. So the question is, is what is neutral? This is a hot topic. This is one that will people will argue with you about. The teachers, again, might say I'm wrong, and that's okay. They can say I'm wrong. You know, I'm not saying I'm the guru of all things hair color, but I kind of have a clue, all right? So what is neutral? Neutral is not brown. It is the number one answer. When I ask somebody, what is neutral? They say brown. But by saying that, you're saying that a blonde can't be neutral. Remember, what neutral really means is it's not warm, or cool. It's just in the middle. It has nothing to do with your level. And brown, my friends, is a level, right? So it can't be brown. Neutral is technically black, gray, or white, depending on the level. But what really it is, is it's a mucky gray color. If you have crayons in front of you or paint in front of you, put some red, some blue, some yellow on a piece of paper, because that's what neutral is. It's equal parts of all three colors. And tell me what that looks like. Does it look brown? It might because of the level of the, you know, the amount of pigment in your crayons, but you can do it in blonde too, right? If you have blonde hair that's not cool, that's not warm, it's just you kind of smack in the middle, it's neutral, right? So just remember that neutral is not really, it's not really a great color. It's more of a tool than anything else. And it's almost never the goal because when people say, I don't want any warmth in my hair, then they really want cool. But neutral itself is kind of a mucky color. So we really use it as a tool to control undertones and all that jazz more than anything else. Okay, so why is this so important? Knowing how to make neutral is very important to your success. In color formulation, knowing when to add it, when to remove it, when to use it completely, when to use a complete complementary color is going to be important. Complementary color is determined by establishing the missing primary, all right? We create neutral by making sure all three primaries are present. Like I said a few minutes ago, neutral is equal parts of red, yellow, and blue. And so to get neutral, to neutralize something, we have to add whatever is missing in, all right? If we have violet, what are we missing? Well, if we have violet, we have blue, we have red. We are missing yellow. So yellow is the complementary color to violet. 
I have green, what do I have? I have blue, I have yellow. What am I missing? Red, right? So red is the complementary color to green. And if I have orange, I have yellow and I have red. What am I missing? I'm missing blue. So blue is the complementary color to orange. All right, now I wanna throw this in there. Um, and I think I'm gonna say it here in a second too, but you will be told over and over again that the complementary color lives across the color wheel and it does, but that should never be your crutch, right? You have to understand why it's the complementary color, all right? So if I have blue, what two colors am I missing, all right? If I have blue, I am missing yellow, I am missing red, all right? So yellow and red make what? They make orange. Okay, so orange is the complementary color to blue. You can see I'm just doing it in reverse. In this video, we'll go over, I'll kind of say the same things over and over again, but in a different way, because I think if you hear it multiple ways, it's gonna click at some point, okay? If I have red, what two colors am I missing? Well, if I have red, I am missing blue, I am missing yellow, which make green. So green is my complementary color to red. And if I have yellow, what two colors am I missing? I'm missing blue, I'm missing red, which means I am missing violet. So violet is the complementary color to yellow, okay? Let's look at a formula really quick. If I have red, how am I gonna get to neutral? What two colors am I missing if I'm gonna get to neutral? Think about it for one second. I'm missing blue, we know that, right? I'm missing yellow, I'm trying to get to neutral, but instead of putting blue and yellow in, I'll just put green into the hair because green is the complementary color to red. Think of Christmas, okay? If I have yellow, what am I missing if I wanna get to neutral? Well, I know I need some blue in there, I know I need some red in there, which really makes violet, right? Think of the Lakers, think of Easter, um, whatever else, okay? Blue, what am I missing to get to neutral? I'm missing some red, I'm missing some yellow, which means I need some orange in my life. Now I'm a Florida Gator, go Gators. Um, and so blue and orange are the Gators, but you can come up with whatever you want to remember that blue and orange go together as complementary colors. Really comes down to what are you missing from your primaries? Let's make it a little bit harder, okay? What if I have red orange? Somebody went home and they bleached their hair out and you know what happens, right guys? If they had dark hair and they, if you've watched enough Brad Mondo to see that if they've got dark hair and they start bleaching it, they start to end up with red orange, right? We have red, we have orange. These are the two things we have to combat. It's blue green. Let's look at that for a second, right? What is the complementary color to red? It's green, we know this. What is the complementary color to orange? It's blue, so I need green and I need blue. Remember earlier, I said in a tertiary color, the primary always comes first. So even though when you look at this, you think green, blue, flip it, it's blue, green. That's how I'm gonna get neutral. Someone comes in in yellow, green hair. Now I um, lived in Florida for a long time. I'm in New Hampshire now, but yellow, green hair, maybe they've been swimming. Chlorine does that, right? So they've got all this yellow, they got all this green. How am I going to get rid of it with a formulation? Well, if I have yellow, I know I need to have some violet in that hair, right? Because what's the complementary color to yellow? It's violet. If I have green, I know I need some red in that hair. So what am I gonna put? Red violet in that hair. I can tone it with red violet, all right? I have blue violet, so maybe they had put Pravana in their hair and they picked that really nice blue violet color, but they wanna go back to neutral. Maybe they have a job that they can't have fantasy hair anymore. If I have blue, I know I need orange in my formula. If I have violet, I know I need yellow. So I'm going to put yellow orange in the hair, all right? So you see guys, it's not that tricky. It's not that difficult. It's really just about breaking down the tertiary colors into its pieces figuring out those complementary colors and then making sure that that primary is listed first, okay? Let's do it with some pictures really quickly. What do we see here? I see that yellow orange, right? You can see the bottom. Maybe she lightened her hair. Maybe she had regrowth, which is why the top pulled up all right, but then the bottom didn't. What tones do we see? We see yellow orange in there. What do I need to eliminate that tone and get her completely neutral? Well, on the bottom half of her hair, if I have yellow orange, I'm going to need violet. I'm going to need blue. So I would do blue violet, all right? That yellow, well, we can just use violet on the top. So you might need two different toners for this one all right how about this one what do we see i see that green i see green in that hair maybe yellow green like we just talked about right so what colors will i need to eliminate that tone well if i have yellow green i know i need violet i know i need what about that green there so i need red so i need red violet all right 
break it down into pieces. What do you see? What tones do you see? What do you have to combat? And that's how you choose, all right? Fundamental number four, putting it all together. Using your understanding of the levels that we've talked about, underlying pigments, the color wheel and complementary color to formulate, you, you can look at your color line and choose the right line, all right? I mentioned underlying pigments just now. Remember, that is the tone that we see when we lighten. So if I put bleach on level two hair, what are the first colors I see? Reds, orange. When you're living, just to simplify this, when you are lifting anything from the threes to the six to sevens, you're going to deal with reds, oranges, you're going to need to combat that in your formula. Let's put it all together, right? First, we determine the natural hair color. What are we looking at? Remember, we're pretending everyone has virgin hair today just for sake of fundamentals, but it gets harder when you have all sorts of randomness in the hair. But first, we determine what the natural color is. Number two, we figure out where do they want to go. Now, this can come with pictures. This can come with color swatches. You know, really try to get a client to show you a picture or a swatch of what they want. Because if they say, I want dirty blonde, that can be totally different in your mind compared to theirs, all right? I also have a lot of women say, I want brown with no red. Well, they usually actually do want some warmth to it. So really get a picture going, okay? Determine what tones you'll need to get to the desired result. Determine what type of color you're going to use. Choose your product, whether you're going to use a demi, a semi, a permanent, whatever it might be. And then choose your developer if you're going to need one. All right, so that's how we formulate. Let's do it, right? Determine your application. Sorry, that's not really a formulation, but you know. A quick rule before we get into some practice here when it comes to neutral. If you are trying to cancel tones out completely, you are trying to cancel out any orange in the hair, use the complementary color pretty much completely, right? So if you're going from a level four to a level six, you know you're gonna have a ton of orange in that hair, you should be using straight up blue if you're trying to cancel it out completely, all right? If you wanna control the tone, but not get rid of it. So again, you're going from a four to a six, and they want a very, like if they want a warm, you know, like a, a, a kind of a brownish color, a light brown color, but with some warmth to it still, you're not trying to eliminate all of the undertone. So that's when you might choose neutral and then add some of the complementary color to it, right? So if you're going, you might use a 6N with a little 6B to make sure it doesn't get out of control. If you're trying to enhance the undertone, forget neutral altogether, just pick the tone you're going with. So if they wanna be a six copper, then you're just going to grab that six copper and put it on that hair, okay? Because you're not trying to control undertone, you're trying to bring it out and actually enhance and play with it. So just remember that if you wanna to cancel tones out completely, choose straight up complementary color. If you wanna control the tone, but not eliminate it, use neutral with some of your complementary color. And if you wanna enhance a tone, just straight up choose the color. I mean, choose the color that you want and it's fine because you're not fighting your complementary color or your, your orange, okay? Let's work through one, all right? Again, we're pretending these all have virgin hair. I know it's not real. It's not even real in life ever, but we're gonna pretend. We're going to start with the girl that says start, right? So she is probably around a level five there. I don't have swatches out. These are all just educated guesses. If you were working on a client, you should be pulling out your swatch book and really trying to match to make sure, okay? We match with what's up here, not down here. Why? Sunlight doesn't hit down here. This is almost always a little bit lighter. So you really want to make sure you're working with the color that they look at every single day, all right? So we see we're at about a level five. She is going to, I would say a level eight, all right? I'd say that's about a level eight. Now we know going from a five to an eight, we're gonna deal with lots of oranges, some yellows, you know, level eight, the undertone is about a yellow, maybe a yellow orange, all right? So we know we're going to actually have to deal with that. Now we can see warmth in the end result. So we are not trying to eliminate all of the undertones, but she's also not bright yellow. So we are controlling it. Now, if I'm going from a five to an eight, I know I'm going to use 30 volume. That's three levels, right? Eight minus five is three. I know that she is wants a golden blonde hair, right? So I'm not trying to eliminate everything. I'm just going to control it. So I would probably choose an 8N, 8 neutral, um, maybe one ounce of 8N, maybe a half an ounce of 8, let's see, we're saying yellow, so 8 violet, just to make sure it doesn't get out of control, and I'm going to use my 30 volume. So one more time, I would probably choose one ounce of 8N, a half an ounce of 8 violet, and then an ounce and a half of 30 volume, okay? That would be the formula. It's that easy. 
It's that easy. Now I say it's that easy, but that's because I've been doing hair for 20 years. This is something you have to practice over and over and over again. Ask your teacher. You are now at a position as a student, go to your teacher and say, I think I should use this. Don't just put it on the hair, but I think I should use this. What do you think? Don't wait for your instructor just to keep giving you the answers because this takes practice. You got to get it wrong sometimes. I've gotten it wrong sometimes. I've gotten it wrong sometimes on clients. It happens, right? But you got to start practicing somehow, okay? Again, we said that we determined the natural color, we figured out where they wanted to go, we knew we were gonna deal with yellows and oranges in there. What, what type of color am I gonna use? I would be using permanent color, right? I would choose my product depending on where I was, what brands we carried in the salon. I knew I would use 30 volume and then I decided I would use some 8N and 8 violet to control the, the gold but not eliminate it completely. All right, the next one, start end. All right. Our start is probably a level three or four. We'll say, I guess it's probably a four. We'll say a four. And our end is right around that eight again. So it's four full levels, right? Now think about my undertones. When I lighten dark hair at a level four, I'm dealing with oranges. I'm dealing with reds. I'm dealing with yellows. I'm dealing with all of those colors, right? I know I have a lot to fight. Okay. Where do we want to go? She still has some gold in there, but Think about how much we're fighting. We're fighting a lot of undertone, okay? So we know we're gonna use permanent color. We're gonna to need to use a 40 volume because we're going four levels. So we know we're gonna to have to use a 40 volume. We really are gonna fight a lot of undertone. So this time I might flip it and I might say I'm gonna use an ounce and a half of eight violet and a half an ounce of eight neutral just so that it doesn't eliminate every bit of undertone. And we're going to you know, get this nice buttery blonde. So for 40 volume, permanent color. You'd want to use some variations. You could even use an eight blue because of all the orange you're dealing with as you come up, right? You have to think about the journey when you formulate, not just the end result. That journey is going to take her through reds and oranges and yellows. You might need to go with a little bit stronger. A blue is always going to be a stronger way to cancel out warmth. So you might want to use your blue on that and flip it on its head this time using more of the undertone or more of the complementary color and less of the neutral, still controlling, okay? What about this one, right? This one, the end result is totally cool. There is no warmth in that end result. She's a level three. This is probably a level seven, totally ashy, okay? So we know we're going four levels. It means we're using permanent color and it means we're using 40 volume, right? We're going four levels and we're, again, we're pretending this is virgin hair. We know it's not, but we're pretending, all right? I am going to move through oranges, reds, yellows, and I don't want any warmth. I'm not trying to control warmth. I am trying to eliminate the warmth, which means I would choose straight up blue. Okay. We're going to deal with a lot of orange in there. So I might as well just choose a seven blue, whatever line you're working with, you'll find it, Redken is a seven AB. It's an ash blue. It's double blue. That blue will fight all of the orange that you had coming up on the journey. Okay. 40 volume, choose my application, apply to the head. All right. Remember something that I said at the very beginning, which is up to, right? If somebody has super coarse hair, you probably can't get them here with hair color, all right? Just remember that in your mind because I don't want you to go back and say, well, Teresa said I can do four levels. Up to four levels, all depending on what the integrity of the hair is, what the structure of the hair is, all of that stuff, okay? Let's do this next one. We have a start and we have an end. A start is probably a level six. An end is about a level six, right? What did we do here? We changed the tone. We didn't actually change the level, we changed the tone, all right? So if I'm going from a level five or six, you know, neutral brown to a level five or six red, I'm just, remember, I'm just enhancing tone. Remember, when we want to enhance the tone, we just straight up choose what we want to, right? So we would probably choose a little, we're gonna say she's a five, she might be a six, but again, I don't have swatches in front of me. I'm gonna choose my level five red, whatever tone we're happy with, whatever we like, and then I'm gonna choose my developer, whether it be a 10 or a 20. Technically, you could use a 10 on this because remember, technically, you can lift up to one level with a 10. If you really want to make sure it pops, you could use a 20, do a little bit more lightning. It's not necessary though. So if the client's looking for just a nice, you know, subtle change to red, you can just use a 10 volume and then determine your application. So it's that simple, right? We went from a five to a five. We chose the five red that we liked. We chose a 10 or 20 volume and we applied. All right. That simple guys. It's that simple.
All right, what about this one, right? So she's to the left, she's probably a level seven. To the end, she's like a level nine or 10. She's up there. I mean, I would even say a 10 in blonde. I don't see any warmth. A level 10, the undertone is yellow, okay? The undertone is yellow. It's a pale yellow, but it's a yellow. You can see she's eliminated all that yellow. So if we're going from a seven to a 10, we're gonna use 30 volume permanent color, right? 30 volume, because it's three levels. I want to eliminate all of the warmth. So forget the neutral. We are going to choose a straight up complementary color to that yellow, which is violet. So I would pick out a 10 violet of some sort, maybe a 10 blue violet of some sort. This is where you get to be an artist. This is where you get to decide what works best and you get to just apply it from there. Okay, so 10 volume, or sorry, 30 volume, three levels. Um, if the hair is kind of coarse, you might use 40 volume so that you get a little bit more lift. But if it's fine, 30 volume will be plenty. So just remember, integrity of the hair matters when it comes to developer. But we're eliminating warmth, which means we're going to use straight up complementary color. All right, what about this? What about this one, right? We've got regrowth at a level two, we've got mid shaft at about a level eight, and we've got ends at a level 10, right? And she wants to be a nice all over one color, a level six or seven, right? So for this guys, you need multiple formulas. That's real life. If you want seamless color, sometimes you have to use multiple formulas. So it, it's the same fundamentals though, right? So if she's a level two and she's going to a level six, well, we know we're gonna to have to use permanent color with 40 volume to get there. You can also see there's a little bit of warmth, but think about the journey. If she's going from a two to a six, lots of orange and red that you're dealing with. So you probably wanna use a blue of some sort. So you would pick out your level six blue and apply it there with 40 volume, okay? Your mid shaft, however, is an eight to a six. Now we have to think about this and we're just going darker. We should probably be using demi-permanent to go darker. We're gonna pick out our level six, we're gonna go down, you know? So we, did, we didn't get a lot into that today. I wanted to go into lightning because I think it's, it's a harder thing to formulate for, but you really do have to look at a client like this and recognize it's more than one formula. It is not one standard formula that you pull scalp to ends. Now, I will say back in the day, we didn't switch to demi permanent when we went to the ends. We used to pump a bunch of shampoo or conditioner into the color bowl and then pull the same color through the ends. It's not good for the hair. We're still pulling ammonia and hydrogen peroxide through the ends when we don't need to. So just remember that. Don't forget to flip your formula if you need to. What about this one, right? So she's starting at this nice pure platinum blonde. I mean, it's gorgeous. And she wants to go back down to a dark brown. Is this something you can just throw onto the hair? No, right? You can't just pick out a permanent color or a demi-permanent color and throw it on and think you're gonna get there. The point of throwing these in guys is it's important that we recognize that there are times we have to take a step back and say, this is no longer standard, this is now corrective, all right? So these last two really become corrective color. All right. Now, I, I think I have on my calendar for this year to do a corrective, a quick 30 minute corrective color um, blitz for you guys. But we're just going to touch on a few things so that you kind of have it in your brain. You can start thinking about it. Right. It's time to consider corrective color when one, you are lifting more than five levels. If you are lifting more than five levels, it's not just a virgin bleach anymore. You are now really stripping hair. You are changing everything in the integrity of the hair. You really have to think about the plan of action. If you're going darker than three levels, it's now corrective color. I know it seems like I should just be able to choose a semi or a demi and throw it on there. It's not how it works. If you don't fill that hair first, we're gonna talk about that in a second, it's not gonna work out for you. If you are dealing with patches of different color on one strand, it is now corrective color. You need to educate your client as to why it's corrective color. They are paying for your brain. I had somebody say that to me, an actual construction guy yesterday and said, I'm not, you're not paying for my time. You're paying for, I mean, you are paying for his time, but we're paying for his information, his brains, his experience. And that's what they're doing with you too. They are paying for your knowledge and your schooling. Okay. So the minute you have to start coming up with multiple formulations, you have to do multiple processes. It is now corrective. Okay. If the hair is crazy damaged, it's corrective color. I, you can have a client with virgin hair, but if they have fried it through swimming and hot irons and all that stuff, it's corrective because you can't just apply a standard formula and think it's gonna work, all right? Finally, if it's going to take you more than two to three hours to complete or more than one sitting to complete, it is corrective. So remember that. You don't shortchange yourself. I've done that in the past where I'm like, oh, I can do this. And then it turns into this project 
I should have charged way more because it spent hours. And your and the clients think, oh, that's that's normal. I should only pay a hundred dollars for this eight hundred dollar application. So be real honest with yourself and know when it's going to turn into corrective. All right. Few techniques to consider. First is filling the hair. I always want to touch on this because I don't know why. I'm just so passionate about filling and what it what it really takes to get nice, rich, dark hair. So if you look at Rihanna here, she's got her blonde hair to her dark hair. And the reality is, is if you just throw that dark color in, it's gonna fade out. It's gonna look ugly. It might look great the day she leaves, but within a couple of days, it's not going to. And the reason is, is remember when we lighten hair, we strip everything. We strip it, we break all of that pigment into pieces. You have turned the hair into Swiss cheese. Well, if I take a piece of American cheese and I let water run through it, it kind of sits on top of the cheese. But if I take Swiss cheese and I let water run through it, it literally just washes right back out, right? It goes right through the cheese. Well, the hair color is gonna do the same thing. If you've turned the hair into Swiss cheese, and I know that sounds terrible, but it really is what we do when we lighten hair. If you turn the hair into Swiss cheese and then you put color right on top of it without filling in any of those holes, the color's gonna wash right back out, okay? So whenever we're going darker, we, we fill the hair for that reason. But we also failed to replace the undertone. We stripped it all out. We made everything, you know, go blonde into that yellow. You need that orange, that red to make it look rich. If you go dark without any of that warmth underneath, it gets really shallow looking. It looks real ashy in the end. It's just not a good look, okay? So anytime you go darker than three levels, you need to, you need to fill. We fill in steps of three. So that means if I'm going from a 10 to a one, I'm going to fill multiple times. I'm gonna fill from a 10 to a seven, and then a seven to a four, and then maybe I can go from that four to that one. And you always add orange and red. Why? We're replacing undertone, right? This is where ceramides come in. This is where all of these undertones come in, right? We really wanna create a nice rich base. Important that if you're filling your client's hair, you tell them what's going on. Because if they turn around and see that they now have orange hair, they're gonna hate you very much, right? So I always tell my clients, this is what we're doing. We're gonna fill this twice. The first time your hair will be orange. The second time your hair will be red. The third time your hair is going to be the color you're looking for. And explain why, because if we don't, do that, we, we create panic and then they lose faith in you. Okay. So that's filling super easy, but it's another one of those things that I see people doing wrong constantly. And they're like, Oh, I put, I filled it neutral. No, you need to fill with undertone. That's the point of the filler. Okay. The gradual lift, right? For people who are going light or silver, take your time. Even Olaplex is not a miracle. You can't lift from a one to a 10 in one shot and think it's gonna go well, all right? Your client should expect to come three or four times if they are trying to get to a silver color and you are charging two to $300 every single time. So please, when you decide you're gonna do this with a client, you give them a plan of action so they know what to expect. Charge accordingly and set realistic expectations. The worst thing you can do is promise your client the world and then you can't do it without breaking the hair off. It's not worth getting them to silver if, you, if you've broken it all off in the meantime, okay? So be smart, take your time and gradually get them there. What about pre-softening? So this is softening for hair, the hair for gray coverage. Gray hair loses a lot of its moisture. It loses, I mean, obviously all the pigment, the melanocytes stop working so that they're not producing pigment anymore. Um, and so it gets really hard to cover, partly because the hair becomes very coarse, but also because there's absolutely no pigment in. We just talked about this with, you know, going darker when we have to fill the hair. Well, pre-softening is tough for a lot of reasons, but one of it is that the cuticle gets very, very compact and very, very tight. What pre-softening does is it uses a little bit of ammonia to slightly lift the cuticle. So ammonia is found in the color tube. What you do is you take the ammonia, you just take the tube of color, not the hydrogen peroxide, just the tube of color, and you put the color on the, the, the hardest gray spots and you stick them under the dryer. What's going to happen is that ammonia combined with the heat is going to start lifting the cuticle for you so that when you actually apply the color, it's already kind of done half the job for you, all right? So you just, not the hydrogen peroxide, not conditioner and shampoo, I've seen people do that. It's really a little bit of ammonia and it lifts up the cuticle there. From there, you can take them back and you can actually apply the color right on top of that ammonia or that, that tube of color, okay? So that's pre-softening. The biggest thing I can share with you guys is when in doubt, ask for help. Even as a stylist, I have never worked in a salon where it was not okay to ask for help or opinions from other stylists. So never feel like you just have to figure this out on your own and that you're just, you're lost. Okay. If you really need help, you can contact me. You can comment on here like, Hey, I need help. And we'll figure out a way to connect on the side. And I'm happy to help you through some of this, but your teachers too, guys, people get into teaching because they want to help you not because of the money. I promise you. So when you are having questions about formulation or corrective color, 
even as a professional, it's okay to go to a coworker and say, I have no idea what to do here. That is all good. All right. It's fine. So don't be afraid to do that stuff. But the biggest takeaway I can give you is to practice, practice, practice. When I was in school and even with students, I would sit with magazines or with Facebook or whatever, pick one color, two colors, practice formula, have a discussion about it, see if everyone's on the same page, move to the next. Use your quick reference wall charts. Those are the color charts that you get from the company lines and pick, okay, I'm going to go from here to here. How do I get there? Practice, practice, practice. Because until you start using this information, it's not going to stick. You'll never really have it down. All right. So with that, that is the fundamentals of color formulation. I could go all day on this, but your teachers would kill me because you'd be in front of your phone for too long. But please watch us go back and watched again. If there's any points that you don't understand, comment, message me, let me know, and I'm happy to walk you through it again. Um, please, please, please subscribe, follow, do all the things, right? All the things that we're supposed to do in social media, I guess. Um, go back and watch chemistry of perms, chemistry of hair color. My goal this year is to have a new video, a video out for students every other week. Most will be more like 15 minutes. This one's a big boy, um, but I appreciate that you guys watched it. Um, discuss it as a class, talk about it with your peers and, um, I hope, please comment and let me know what you think of it because I would love to make more. If you have topics that you want covered, please, again, reach out, comment, tell me, and I would love to make videos for you, okay? Thanks so much for watching. Uh, I hope you have an awesome, awesome day and uh, a great rest of 2020 because we're almost there. We've almost made it. <laughs> have a great day, guys.